Let's go straight to Esther Kraku, political commentator, Turning Point UK contributor. She's been very vocal on social media uh, over the past week or so since an awful lot of this Black Lives Matter demonstrations have been going on, since an awful lot of this sort of what you might call cultural uh, reinvention has been going on. And while we still continue to debate uh, the importance of different historical figures, it's time really now, is it not, to say, where does this all end? Esther, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. Well, I suppose the question is to you, first of all, where does it end? Um, it doesn't. It's just, it just doesn't end. It's something that I don't... I really don't understand where it's coming from. I think it's quite an insidious movement because a lot of these people are operating under the banner of, sort of Black Lives Matter and Black Lives. And I'm like, well, this is not something that's had a tangible effect on me as a black person in the UK. I don't know many people that can say, as black people, this has really improved our lives. Um, I've been very vocal about the Black Lives Matter movement, the organization, um, and it's not some sort of great conspiracy. I thought, you know, there is this movement, people are donating money to it. Maybe I think by some shock that posting a black square on Twitter or Instagram is not enough, it's not enough to completely dismantle racism. So I thought, maybe let me go and donate money. I went onto the UK and US website. I saw dismantle capitalism, um, basically destroy the traditional family and a whole bunch of other cultural Marxist nonsense. And I just tuned out. That's literally it. I went to the About Us page on these websites and realized they were not about black people. They were about a completely different agenda. And I've been receiving all sorts of hatred for it. And I just thought, if you're gonna donate money to a cause, you might wanna read about what the agenda is. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, Esther, have been making a distinction, say, between the uh, the organisation itself and those who wish to kind of protest and march uh, because they feel that there is some kind of discrimination going on uh, with people in the black community. And I think it's important to make that distinction because, you know, there are some people who believe very strongly uh, in making this particular point, and in a democracy they should be able to, although I'm not quite sure what happens on Saturday because, of course, the government have said that any gathering of more than six people is now illegal. There's a Black, right, a black Lives Matter march aimed for London on Saturday, so I'm not quite sure how the police are going to deal with that. Yeah, I, that's another thing I received a lot of hatred for because I did say I was sick of the protest because I personally, I don't see, and I'm speaking in the context of the UK, is the Black Lives Matter movement in the UK protesting in solidarity with the US or are they protesting in solidar or protesting because of the 13 black people that have died in police custody in the UK over the span of a decade? Yes. But this, this is what I don't understand. And it's like, you're making figures. I was like, no, these are public figures. These, this is what we're looking at. It's, it, I just, I, and for, for me, what I find so offensive, there's not even people's right to go out and protest. I find it offensive in the context that we're living in the sense that we've been in lockdown for weeks, for months even. We've had people telling us, save the NHS. Uh, the Tories want to defund the NHS. If you don't want to stay indoors, you hate everyone. And yet, you have people that don't realize the scale of the sacrifice we've made as a nation. People have lost their jobs, people have lost their homes, people don't have any sort of financial security, people are completely confused. We've all done this in an effort to contain a virus, and yet you somehow believe that you're so high and mighty that you can gather in the tens of thousands, congregate, put all of our lives in danger, and then if something happens, you say, Boris killed your man. Yeah. Right? I, I, I don't understand how, like, Dominic Cummings received all sorts of hell and vitriol for driving up to seek childcare for his child, and yet you are allowed to congregate in the thousands for a cause that I don't even, I don't really see, like I, I'm yet to be convinced that congregating in the thousands is, a, is, is the right reaction for the 13 black people that have been killed in police custody over 10 years. Yes. I mean, I spoke to Gary McFarlane, who's one of the uh, uh, representatives of Black Lives Matters last week. Um, and when I asked him what his aims were, his aims were very specific. He wanted to get rid of the police. He wanted to give the money that the police get uh, to community activists to police themselves. He wanted to see the end of the voting system that we currently use and instead have some kind of local kind of community activist voting, which would apparently rule out any Tory from ever winning a seat. Um, you know, these were the aims of a man who belongs to the Socialist Worker Party. Um, um, and, and he talks about the endemic racism, the institutional racism, but the aim of the marches, he couldn't seem to tell me uh, what that was because he couldn't really tell me um, what it was that they would achieve and when they would stop marching because they'd achieved it. Exactly. But this is the point. It's not a great conspiracy, right? You just go onto the website and look at what they're saying. 
me me being against this movement and it's very funny because they've they've kind of they've chosen a slogan that sounds like it's you know going to revolutionize everything and help black people black lives matter you know it's a very catchy slogan but all you have to do is go to the website and see what they're advocating for if you donate towards these these people this is this is the agenda that they will be trying to implement you have premier league footballers i don't even know if they're wearing black lives matter on their jerseys like saying the sky is blue as in black lives do indeed matter or if it's in support of this organization but it's important to do that distinction because i personally am not convinced that the reason why tens of thousands of people around the country are marching together in the in the midst of a global pandemic of a disease that's airborne I, first personally i'm not convinced either there's two things either this there, there's some misinformation or there's some things the public hasn't been told about the virus or this is a complete farce. Yes. And let's talk about the Cecil Rhodes statue, because rather uh, ironically, it seems to me, um, they are going to remove the statue. I'm not quite sure exactly where it's going to go, um, but they're not going <laughs> to remove the Rhodes Scholarship and neither are they going to remove any of the kind of um, uh, the other academic sort of connections that Cecil Rhodes set up all of those years ago. So, I mean, surely if you're going to get rid of the statue, you get rid of the name, don't you? Yeah, I, this is this is another thing, uh, and you know you notice the kind of people that are advocating for this tend to be sort of white jobless liberals. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, taking down a statue means nothing. I made I made a kind of a devil's advocate point and said, you know, the Queen is on the face of virtually most of our money. The British monarchy was the face of the British Empire and all the sort of atrocities that came with it. Wouldn't it make more sense to rip up your money, which you actually can't because all of our bills now can't be ripped. Wouldn't it make more sense to rip up our money as opposed to taking down a statue that does literally that does nothing? I mean, I don't. I lived in um, Bristol for four years. I walked past the Colston statue almost every day. I did not shake, change color, turn blue, have a stroke because there was a statue of a guy called Colston. Like, I'm sorry, but it's it's just ridiculous. If you want to make change or you want to make progress, educate yourself on the history. Don't attack British um, historical and cultural figures and say you're making a change and helping me as a black person. Yes. I find it particularly offensive when it comes to white liberals because the only kind of black people or minority people that they seem to want to defend are the people that, you know, clap and cheer and bark like seals and thank them for the, the kindness of their service to black people. Like, no, we have we all have independent, independent opinions. Um, I my only lived experience is my own. I can't say that as a black person, I've lived exactly the same experiences as another black person, or there is this collective movement of experiences. It, I I don't buy into it. I'm an individual first, and I'm not about to have white liberals tell me that they're helping me by throwing a, a statue into the ocean. Well, quite. I mean, it's kind of condescending in its own way, and and seemingly for me. Um, I've had it pointed out by a tweet, a tweet that I've just received that uh, while they uh, renamed Colston Hall, it remains on Colston Street. But I imagine they'll probably change the name of the street. But equally, yesterday, I was quite surprised to see the Bishop of Bristol, uh, who's decided now that he's going to remove some of the stained glass windows from Bristol Cathedral uh, because of the connection they have uh, with Colston. And he's going to cover some of the other ones up. It's a kind of new Victorianism, isn't it? It's, it's just complete lunacy. It's complete lunacy. It's idleness that's been brought on by this pandemic. It's completely ridiculous. It's not about black people. And this is what I find particularly offensive because they're peddling off the, the deaths. They're, they're using this movement and peddling off the deaths of, tragic deaths actually, of black individuals in the US, transporting it here in some sort of weird, almost neocolonial fast and saying this is to help black people i'm sorry i'm not buying it i'm not about to have a conversation about you helping black people and peddling all sorts of nonsense on the back of that that's not that's not a conversation i'm willing to engage in there is no point tearing down statues covering up i mean honestly if you are offended by statues you have bigger internal struggles to deal with well that's I, my purpose yeah i mean i think i've said this many times before in the last few weeks that i think we've reached a point of civilization in this country where we have really literally nothing to worry about. You know, when I was listening to uh, President de Gaulle's speech this morning that he made 80 years ago, talking about Nazis invading Paris, talking about the occupation of Paris, talking about 8 million people uh, who were literally displaced from their homes as the stormtroopers moved in. And you think to yourself, you know, now that's something to worry about. You know, we have nothing to worry about. So now we kind of invent these, um, you know, imaginary offensive uh, things that happen to us. Exactly. And I think this is this is the problem with societies, the richer they become, younger people feel that they need to be part of a struggle. And then they just latch on to whatever nonsense they can get onto. I mean, I if I stood in London in the middle of this process and said to one white person, how are you tangibly helping me right now? 
they would probably just leave because there is really not a conversation to be had there. Well, would and you would you be described as a traitor to your race, perhaps? Oh yeah, that's that's another thing. So I don't think people understand what they're actually doing when they fund organizations like this, especially organizations that have made their agenda so clear. I've been receiving a wave of vitriol and abuse, especially from African Americans, actually, they tend to be American, of calling me all sorts of like the N word and coon. And I'm like, first of all, that's not even my reality because I'm not American. I'm not African American. I'm not a descendant of black slaves that were moved to America. So that's not even unique to my circumstances. That that's that's something that you could use in your own community, but it doesn't really work here when you're thinking about a black British person who has African heritage and is something that she very much identifies with and is very familiar with, considering I lived there for the vast majority of my life. Um, and also there are bot accounts with two followers, a picture of someone's bum and dollar signs in their name that are sending me all sorts of hate that vanish within 24 hours because they're just accounts that are created to send hatred. There is an actual insidious movement to shut down voices of dissenting opinions. I've been abused, harassed, told that someone, someone told, wished that I was barren. I, I mean, it's all sorts of horrible stuff because I said, go onto the Black Lives Matter website and check their about page. Yeah, but it is this kind of left um, obsession, isn't it, with, with what they call identity politics, where people like Priti Patel and, and yourself uh, can't possibly be the victims of racism because you can't possibly imagine what it must be like because you don't happen to be left wing. Exactly. And this is the thing. They're only defending a certain kind of minority. You had Ash Saka on Twitter saying this is racial gatekeeping. And I'm like, what is your end game? What do you actually want? Are you in it for minorities to thrive and to think for themselves? Or do you only recognize minorities that literally say they're communists and think like you? I don't respect that. I, I think it is insidious. I think it's horrible. I think the fact that the Guardian can put a, a disgustingly racist picture of Priti Patel online and there was not the kind of like that's something I would go out and protest. Yeah. Right. The fact that there is no outrage with that, I'm getting all sorts of abuse for saying, check the about page of an organization you're donating to. And you have people online just completely disregarding my opinion because I'm not the right kind of black person. It's just I think it's just disgusting. Yeah. And I suppose um, no more ridiculous way to end this conversation, Esther, than to remind you of your tweet uh, to Fiona Onasanya, uh, who seems to be very upset by Rice Krispies and Cocoa Pops. She's she's shouting at cereal. <laughs> like, this, this, this is where we're at. This is a woman who lost her seat because she lied to the police to get out of a speeding ticket, and she's shouting at cereal online. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much, I guess that sums it all up, really, doesn't it? Yeah, this is the lunacy of the left. Domino's is getting cancelled for a nine-year tweet. Someone is shouting at cereal. They're cancelling Auntie Jemima's um, syrup in the U.S. I mean, this is this is this is how pathetic they see black people. Yeah. This is how pathetic they see. So, so can you give us any any hope for uh, uh, for some kind of truce here, at least, if if we can't see the end of the the craziness and the re overreaction uh, to what is uh, the history of of this country and many other countries? You know, where, can there be a truce of some kind? Um, I think there can be a truce when people start, stop A, being offended by everything, B, assume that the person you're talking to knows something that you don't know, which is a pretty good principle to live by, and just decide to do their own research before they jump on bandwagons on social media or play games of so you think you can woke, right? Yeah. I think the fact that I've received abuse, I've become sort of like an almost like an internet meme for pointing out the obvious, that is actually detrimental to black communities everywhere, is is quite frankly ridiculous the positive is i'm never going to stop i'm never going to be bullied into silence I i'm gone in i have african heritage i have uncles and aunties and mothers and fathers that roast me all the time i can take the worst bullets i don't care i'm not going to stop i'm not going to sit by and see a an organization that's peddling dismantling capitalism and abolishing the police and using black people to peddle that kind of nonsense into society absolutely not Esther, a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Esther Kraku uh, there, who is, of course, with Turning Point UK, 